a truck carrying fuel has entered Gaza for the first time since the start of this war. The UN has accused Israel of using fuel as a weapon of war during this whole conflict. After more than a month, Israel has allowed a single truck carrying about 24,000 litres of diesel to enter the Gaza Strip through the Rafah crossing. But that fuel is only meant for UN trucks to distribute aid. It's not for use in hospitals or for other critical civilian needs. The UN's refugee agency says it needs 160,000 litres every day for its basic humanitarian work. The head of UNRWA has warned about 70% of the territory's people will soon have no clean water or fuel as generators, desalination plants and pumping stations all stop working. This crisis, as we know, has hit hospitals the hardest. The largest, Al Shifa, isn't getting the 10,000 litres of fuel a day that it needs and has been forced to suspend services. And telecommunications companies are expected to run out of fuel on Thursday, leading to network breakdowns. Well, let's bring in Juliette Tuma. She is the Director of Communications for UNRWA, the UN Palestine Refugees Agency. She joins us now from Amman in Jordan. Juliet, we've been covering this fuel crisis for weeks. I know UNRWA has been leading the charge here. Can you give us a sense of the scale here, that the numbers really don't quite do it justice? I mean, yes, um, there are many numbers. I think the number that should stay with all of us is that more than 70% of the population in Gaza were forced to flee their homes. 70%. And as a result, now we have hundreds of thousands of people who have sought refuge in our shelters. Mm -hmm. Our shelters are overcrowded. We do not have the enough supplies or the capacity to deliver assistance to that huge of a number. And we also do not have fuel. Juliet, so with no access, though, this fuel is not meant for your operations. It's not meant for hospitals. What difference will this fuel actually make? Good question. Not much. That fuel was conditioned. The use of that fuel was conditioned by the Israeli authorities. Um, a very small delivery of fuel. I, I don't remember the figure that you used, but it's the equivalent of, of half a truck, right? Mm. I mean, it's not much. We can use that fuel for two days to go to the borders, pick up the supplies, put them in a warehouse. We're not even able to distribute those supplies right. or use the fuel for medical facilities or other um, parts of our humanitarian operation. Is there the hope, Juliet, that even with the small amount that's gone in, that this might be the beginning of more? I know obviously Israel had, had a complete opposition to any fuel at all. Now that they're allowing some in, could there be room for negotiation for more, given that the fact that this will, will basically make no differences at all, as you, as you just described? Look, uh, every um, gesture is, is, is welcome, but is it enough? It's by far not enough. It's like the conversation you and I had when those trucks of supplies started coming yeah. into the Gaza Strip. We call them a drop in the ocean. So no, it's not enough. It's not enough. And, and fuel should not be used as a weapon of war. And organizations like the organization where I work, like UNRWA, should not be begging for fuel because we need it for our humanitarian operation. It's very, very simple. And there are international humanitarian law implications of this too, right, Juliet? Sorry, come again. Uh, there are international humanitarian law implications of restricting fuel. It is being used as a weapon of war, just like water has been, just like food has been, just like this whole aid operation that we've been managing at UNRWA is being trapped, is being strangled due to all these uh, restrictions, including those trucks that have been coming in. Very, very good that supplies have finally started going into the Gaza Strip after two weeks of very tight siege, but they're not enough, the volume is not enough, yeah. they don't have fuel on them, it's a cumbersome operation. Shouldn't be the case. It's humanitarian aid uh, Julia, that should we... flow very easily and smoothly to the communities in need. Of course. Well, we understand, too, that telecommunications, which also requires fuel, is now on the verge of collapse. How long do we have? Any time. I mean, in some parts of Gaza, it already collapsed. You see, it's it's not very scientific. You can't say, oh, well, all across Gaza today, there will not be telecoms. 
It, it doesn't go like that. Or, oh, the, all the bakeries will shut down. It's not very scientific. It depends on how much storage of fuel you have in a place, right? So it's not going to be like a total shutdown. And, and this is why, you know, those very specific questions cannot be answered, right? What we do know is that fuel shipments have not come into Gaza since the 7th of October. Yesterday, we had a very, very small shipment of fuel that is absolutely tiny, that was very conditional. This is not what we need to run a massive humanitarian operation the size of the one that UNRWA runs in Gaza. Julia Tuma there, UNRWA's head of communication, speaking to us from Amman and Jordan. Thank you very much, Julia. We really wish you all the best with your work, you and your staff. Thank you.